Hey everyone, this is Haley from Cartiers. With all this talk about Pink Diamond lately, I started thinking about the gems that were made for each of the diamonds. As it has become clear over the course of the series, gems are typically allotted to each of the diamonds based on their gem color. It's interesting how well this has worked out thus far in the series, because it appears that the color of the gem is determined by the color of the rock the injectors are placed on. Just compare the two kindergartens on Earth that we have seen, we had the one that Amethyst came out of which had a very dark blue and purple rock, compared to Jasper's kindergarten, which had more of an orangey one with stripes, in fact. So did the diamonds just happen to choose the planets that would make the color of the gems that suited them best? Well, maybe it's more likely that after gems are created, they were given to a certain diamond based on their color. But anyways, as I was saying, we have seen that gems are for the most part divided by what color their gem is. At least this was the case before Pink Diamond was shattered and threw off this way of organizing gems. So Yellow Diamond gets yellow and green gems, Blue Diamond gets blue gems, and Pink actually got quite a few colors of gems such as pink, red, orange, and purple gems. And you might be saying, but hey Lee, what about the rubies in the answer? And those other gems in the background that are also red? Well, as for the rubies, they are stated to be common foot soldiers. We know that the ruby squad belongs to the Yellow Diamond, and the rubies we saw in the answer were blues so they might be an exception to this rule. As for the background gems, I'm not actually sure. This was after Pink Diamond shattering, so perhaps this is where many of her court gems went. Blue Diamond may have attained Pink Diamond's red as well as purple gems, while Yellow Diamond got orange and maybe even pink gems. Or maybe they are just background characters and we shouldn't be paying too much attention to their colors. And you might be quick to notice that I'm missing someone here. That is, of course, White Diamond, the last diamond yet to be revealed. We know so little about her, and that brings me to the point of today's theory. Where exactly are her gems? As the supposed leader of the Diamond Authority, with the most colonies out of any of the diamonds, surely we must have seen at least some of her gems by now. But have we seen any gems with the white diamond emblem on their clothing? Nope, not really, except if you count Amethyst and Gem Heist. When she shapeshifts, she decides the best color diamond to put on her clothing would be white, and no gem at the zoo notices. Of course, there are many warning signs that these visitors at the zoo were suspicious, which Holly Blue ignored. But seeing as nobody noticed the coloration of the diamond on her clothing, this might in fact support my conclusion, which I'll get to later. And since we know Amethyst was originally for Pink Diamond, I can only really guess at what color gemstones White Diamond would have had, well except for white ones of course. There is gray and maybe even black and brown, although it seems the crew tries to avoid human skin colors when making gems. Of course, Rose Quartz breaks this rule, so perhaps anything goes. So thinking about gems with that color, there are actually two corrupted ones that come to mind. First is Snowflake Obsidian, which Bismuth mentioned. This gem is black with white spots on it. And then there is the gem in the obelisk from Sirius Steven. It is diamond in shape, so that's an interesting choice. It actually might not be corrupted and is just a gem controlled object like Lapis was. Something to note, however, is that these are probably both crystal gems. We have yet to see any gems of this variety that are still loyal to White Diamond. And with one exception, we have yet to see any non-corrupted gems have a gemstone of one of these colors. With the one exception being Pearl of the Crystal Gems, as many of you were probably eager for me to point out. Every time I talk about her, I have to mention that there are still so many mysteries surrounding her origin. The biggest one being who she was made for. But I should note that Michael recently made a video about this very topic. Hint hint, he said it was a diamond. I do recommend checking out this video if you haven't already, since it does switch things up a little bit from the usual thought that Pearl always belonged to White Diamond. However, let's get back to the topic at hand. Let's assume Pearl was in fact a gem made for White Diamond. Besides gem placement, a common point that is brought up is supporting this theory is that her skin color matches White Diamond's quite well. Technically, it's more of an ivory color than completely white, so I'll be calling it that. So then, that's one gem made for White Diamond. And that's it. It's very much possible we just haven't seen any of the other gems since we have had no interaction with White Diamond. But even on Homeworld, none of the off-color gems had gemstones that were unusual in color or could be compared to the Crystal Gem Pearls. So perhaps this mystery is closely related to another question the show currently has. Where is White Diamond? Some people answer that by saying that she is no longer around, or does not wish to be bothered anymore, or is dealing with things way beyond what the other diamonds are dealing with. And therefore, she gathered up every single gem that belonged to her, that was currently outside, and brought them with her to wherever she went. This would be a whole lot of gems, so this doesn't make too much sense. 
Or, since her mural does depict her most likely holding Homeworld in her hands, and she has a huge structure dedicated to her image on Homeworld itself, it is very possible that all of her gems are on Homeworld, and we just didn't see them yet. Not even the off-colors seem to have a light color gem that is close to pearls in color though, so this might not be the case. Or for a slightly different explanation, White Diamond tasks her gems to explore the galaxy and look for new colonies, which is why it wasn't much of a surprise to see an amethyst with a White Diamond insignia on her clothing. White Diamond does have the largest number of colonies after all. However, this does bring me to my final option that I've thought of, and I like this option because it is very interesting. And that is the possibility that every gem is White Diamond's gem. She is, as I said earlier, the gem with the most colonies. I wouldn't be surprised if she was the tallest and most powerful gem in existence. She can call on any gem at any time and ask them to do any task for her, no matter their coloration. White light is, after all, the mixture of all wavelengths of visible light. So when it is separated by using a prism, different colors of light are dispersed. And perhaps Pearl looks the way she does so she could look as close to her diamond as possible, therefore making these two gems the only two of importance with this coloration in the show. That last bit might be a bit of a stretch since in real life there are so many gems that are white or ivory in color, so it is likely that there will be another important gem soon that will have this coloration. But we'll have to wait and see what diamond they are loyal to. Yet we have few examples in the show thus far about gems like this, so the theory stands at the moment. What do you think about the absence of gems loyal to White Diamond, or to have a similar coloration in the show thus far? Is it just a coincidence, or is it very deliberate? Let me know in the comments section down below. This theory was chosen by Cartoon Universe's patrons in a now weekly poll, where the most popular theory is picked to have a video created for. This and many other things are included when you support us on Patreon. Consider checking out our Patreon page to see what we have to offer, as I updated some of the rewards. And thank you Hong for creating the thumbnail image. I commissioned her to make this piece for my video, so check out her channel if you have a chance. She does a lot of nice speed paints and has her commissions open. Also, a big thank you to everyone who proofread the episode. If there's a factual error, don't blame me. Just kidding, they already caught a bunch of my mistakes and really helped me out with this theory. Credits to them are below. Have an animated day everyone!